Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, Lord, everybody. The psalm declared, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates. O Jerusalem, God is a good God. Amen. Amen. And he's worthy of all the praise. Help me say worthy. Worthy. Say it again. Help me say worthy. Worthy. He's worthy in the morning. He's worthy in the afternoon. He's worthy in the evening. He is a good God all the time, and he's worthy of all the praise. Amen? Amen. I am Pastor Chips Davis of In Season Ministries, located at 1801 Port Malabar Boulevard in the beautiful city of Palm Bay, Florida, where we offer you a refreshing impartation of God's word. And right now we're going to move even further in our series for the year entitled let's go forward and today I want to talk from this word Jehovah Jireh Jehovah Jireh if you would get your Bibles turn to the book of Genesis chapter 22 and we want to write these scriptures down I'm going to be reading from the King James and Pastor Bridge is going to be reading from the living Bible. Pastor Bridge, I need you to start at verse 1. Genesis chapter 2, reading from the living Bible, verse 1. Read there. Later on, God tested Abraham's faith and obedience. Abraham, God called, yes, Lord, he replied. Help me say, God, God. tested Abraham's faith. Amen. And when we read this, we must understand that just like God tested Abraham's faith, God will also test our faith. Amen. Somebody holler, where is your faith level? Uh, Do you say that you believe or do you actually believe that God can do anything except fail? But we learn here in this word that God put Abraham to a test of his faith and obedience. Can you shout, yes, Lord? The Bible says in verse 2 from the King James, And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah and offer him therefore a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of. Isn't this amazing? God is giving Abraham instructions. And what I like about what God is doing here is he promised Abraham that he would give him a son. Amen. He also promised Sarah that she would have a child. Are you listening? And I need you to understand that the promise came out and the Bible says Sarah laughed because she was barren. But how many know that God can reverse whatever thing he wants to reverse in our life? Can you shout yes, Lord? And the Bible lets us know that this promise came forth, but it took 25 years for it to manifest. Help me say 25 years. Some of us don't even want to wait for God 25 minutes. In other words, we want a microwave miracle. 
Whenever God says he's going to do it, we expect many times for him to do it when? Now. But some things take time. Can you shout, yes, Lord? Yes, Lord. So it took 25 years. Let me say 25 years. And the Bible says something very profound that said about Sarah that it ceased to be with her the manner of women. And what that simply means, lady, is her menstrual cycle had stopped. Are you listening? And then you, you would understand that when your menstrual cycle stops, lady, you're really not able to what? Have a child anymore. But God. Somebody holler, but God. But God is able to reverse anything. Can he do it? Did he do it? And the Bible says at 90 years old, Abraham being 100 years old, Sarah being 90 years old, God blessed them with the son by the name of Isaac. Say Isaac. Now here in verse 2 of Genesis chapter 22, uh, the part of the test, he says, take now thy son. Thine only son, Isaac. Help me say the only son. Now, if we search scripture, we do know that Abraham had a son before Isaac. Am I right? But it was not what God promised. Amen? Because he said that you would have a child with Sarah. But what happened was uh, that, that Sarah believed that the time had passed and, and there was no child coming. And she said, well, I tell you what, Abraham, take my handmaid, Hagar. Am I right? And, and y'all go in together and have a son. Help me say Abraham obeyed. <laughs> Can you shout yes Lord? yes, Lord? And there came a son from that called Ishmael. Am I talking? But that was not the son of promise. Are you listening? You got to be careful how you walk out of the will of God to try and make things happen. Let me say it. You got to be careful how you what? Walk out of the will of God and try and what? Make things happen. Help me say stay in the will of God. Am I talking? Help me say, stay in the will of God. And the Bible lets us know that when Sarah had her child by the name of Isaac, then there was conflict in the camp. Help me say conflict. In other words, she said, ah, mm -hmm, I got my son now. And hey God, you and Ishmael got to go. Help me say, they got to go. You got to be careful how you what? Spread your seed around men. Am I talking? Because sometimes, let me say sometimes, it will cause conflict. Can you shout the yes, Lord? So here we have God saying again, take thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and what? Get thee into the land of Moriah, and what? Offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of. Help me say offer him. him. See, so you, you must understand what God was telling Abraham. In other words, he was saying offer him. Help me say offer him. Offer him. As a burnt offering. Amen. You understand what burnt mean, right? Help me say he's going to put the fire to it. Can you say, oh my. Bible says in verse 3, And Abraham rose up early in the morning. Say early in the morning. And what saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son. And what clave the wood for the burnt offering. You see that? And what rose up and went unto the place of which God had told him. Let me say he got up early. Now you see, you, you, you must understand that him getting up early was probably his best move. Because if Sarah had been up, amen, she probably would stop him from taking her son. Am I talking? Help me say sometimes you got to get up early. The Bible says in verse 4, then what? On the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and what? 
saw the place afar off. Can you imagine what he was feeling at this time? He, he obeyed God and, and, he, and he showed his faith by obeying God. But help me say the closer he got. Are you hearing me? The closer he got to that place. Can you imagine how he was feeling on the inside knowing that his obedience could possibly cause him his son's life. But help me say obey God. What I what I, I what I, I I see in this word is many times God's not gonna tell us the whole story. He's not gonna tell us everything right then. But you have to walk by faith. Help me say walk by faith. You got to get in His will and stay in His will and know that the will of God is going to be done whether I like it or not. But it's my job to be obedient. Can you shout, yes, Lord? Help me say it's my job to simply obey God. Can you shout, yes, Lord? Verse 5, the Bible says, And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder. And what? Worship. Watch this. I like these last words. And come again to you. Help me say that's faith talking. He's told the men, you stay here. Me and my son Isaac, we're going to go and we're going to worship God. And we are going to come back. Can you shout yes, Lord? Who knows the plan of God? Help me say no one except God reveal it to it. But we can speak faith. Amen. Help me say we can have the ability to what? To call those things that be not as though they were just like God did. Help me say faith is moving through the mouth of Abraham. Can you shout yes Lord? Can you shout thank you Jesus? Verse 6 the Bible says and Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering. You see that? And what? Laid it upon Isaac his son. Mm. And what? He took the fire in his hand and a knife and they went both of them together. Help me say father and son. Now that's a beautiful picture right there. Father and son walking together. You got to be very cautious, lady, when you choose the person that you want to lay with. You got to understand that it can't be just one day, can't be just one night. But you want the type of man that's going to be able to walk with his children. Am I talking? You want the type of man that's going to be in the child's life. Not somebody that will sleep with you and run to the next woman and run to the next woman and run to the next woman and they are not a part of the child's life. Help me say learn from Abraham. He and his son walked together. Can you shout yes Lord? Verse 7 the Bible says and Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said my father and he said here am I, my son. The Bible says, and he said, behold the fire and the wood. But where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Say, oh my. The wisdom of Isaac was asking his father, I see the fire. I see the wood. But I don't see the lamb. Yeah. Uh, are you listening? Yeah. In other words, the, the scripture doesn't tell us how old Isaac was. But he was old enough to understand that something was missing yeah. from the sacrifice. Can you shout yes Lord? Yes, Lord. Can you shout thank you? Yeah. The Bible says what? In verse 8, and Abraham said, my son. Mm, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them 
together. Help me say God's going to provide. Say it again. God's going to provide. Has anybody lived long enough to know that God is your provider? And when it seemed like you was at the end and nowhere to go, God, as, the, as my old folk used to say, God can make a way out of no way. Can you shout, thank you, Jesus? Have you ever lived long enough to have the testimony when you were in a situation and you didn't know how you were going to get out? Uh, you call on the name of the Lord. And he answered your prayer when it looked like it was failure all around. Help me say, God did it. Say it again, God did it. Can you shout thank you? Can you shout glory? Can you shout God's going to do it again? He did it before and he'll do it again. Can you shout yes, Lord? Pastor Bridget, if you would, from the Living Bible at verse 9, read there. When they arrived at the place where God had told Abraham to go, he built an altar and placed the wood in order, ready for the fire. Help me say, he built the altar. And he laid the wood in place. Look at the obedience of Abraham. Oh my God. God promised him he would have a son. Yes. And it seems as though God's getting ready to take the son away. Yes. But I like what Abraham did. And many times in my mind I, I pondered, would I be able to do what Abraham did? Yes. Yes. Oh my God. Yes, ah, would I be able to do what Abraham is doing right now? And I say to myself, God, I'm glad that you used Abraham and not Pastor Chips. Amen. Yeah. Ooh, can you shout, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. So the Bible says what? He, he put and built an altar and what? Placed the wood in order. Help me say in order. In order. Continue reading, Pastor Bridget. Ready for the fire. Ready for the fire. And then tied Isaac and laid him on the altar over the wood. Oh my gracious. Wow. Can you picture this? Abraham taking his son, the son of promise, and what? Laid him and what? Tied him down. Help me say, oh my. Lord, have mercy. Ooh, verse 10, read, Pastor Bridget. And Abraham took the knife he took the knife and lifted it up to plunge it into his son he took the knife to what plunge it into his son yes, to slay him uh, to kill him uh, because that's what God said do yes. am I talking yes. can you shout yes Lord who in their right mind would do what Abraham is getting ready to do? Help me say, you got to learn how to obey God. It may not make sense to you, but God is God over all. And we've got to learn that even in our natural mind, that it may not make sense if we obey God. Ah, God has a way of working it out. All right. Can you shout yes, Lord? Have you ever been in a situation that God worked it out? You didn't see how it was going to happen. You didn't see who it was going to happen with. Help me say, but my faith caused me to obey God. And God turned an adverse situation into a praise. Can you shout yes, Lord? Can you say thank you? Continue reading, Pastor Bridget. And Abraham took the knife. Took the knife. And lifted it up lifted to it plunge up. it into his son to slay him. Read it, verse 11. Read at it. At that moment. At that moment. The angel of God whew, shouted to him from heaven. Abraham. Abraham. Listen. Can you imagine over the 100 years 
of Abraham's life, all of a sudden, the angel of the Lord called his name twice. Help me say, that was the great call. That was a great call. Help me say, that's a great call. That's a great call. In other words, he was getting ready to plunge the knife into his son, but God called out to him two times. Help me say, Abraham. 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 And he said what? Yes, Lord. Woo, can you shout? Thank you. Yes, Lord. Can you shout glory? glory? Pastor Bridget, verse 12, read. Lay down the knife. Put the knife down. Don't hurt the lad in any way. Don't hurt your child in any way. Stop right there. Men, don't hurt your children in any way. It's sad that some of our children don't even know their father. Amen. He's missing from their life. Yes. When you're missing from your child's life, the child grieves. Yes. The child hurts. Yes. Help me say, don't, don't. miss this opportunity yes. to spend with your child and children. Amen. Can you shout, yes, Lord? Pretty much all the time, the mothers are there most of the time. Amen? Amen? But where are the fathers? Help me say, where are the fathers? Fathers, if you're hearing this message, it's time for you to step up and love the child that God gave you. Can I talk to you? Can you shout, yes, Lord? Yes, Lord. Can you shout, thank you? thank you? At that moment, the angel of God shouted to him from heaven. Help me say the shout from heaven. Say it again, a shout from heaven. Abraham, Abraham. And he said what? Yes, Lord, he answered. Lay down the knife. Help me say lay it down. Do not hurt the child in any way. Pastor Bridget, continue reading. The angel said. Read, dear. For I know that God is first in your life. Now I know that what God is first in your life. Read, dear. You have not withheld even your beloved son yes. from me. Help me say you haven't withheld them. Even that son from me. Read, dear. Then Abraham noticed a ram caught. By its horns in a bush. Help me say there was a ram. There was a ram. Verse 13 from the King James. The Bible says that Abraham lifted up his eyes. And looked and behold him a ram caught in the thicket by his horns. Can you shout yes Lord. And the Bible says and Abraham went and took the ram. And what offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. Help me say God can make a way out of no way. Can you shout yes Lord. Even when it looks like it's the end. Help me say it's a new beginning. Can you shout it's a new beginning. Can you shout thank God for my new beginning. Can you shout yes Lord. The Bible says, and Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked again and saw the ram. Help me say he saw the ram. Verse 14, the Bible says, and Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh. Woo, help me say Jehovah Jireh. The simple meaning of Jehovah Jireh means God Jehovah is able to provide. Amen. Help me say, God is my provider. Say it again. God is my provider. God is my provider. In other words, in a situation where it looked dire for his son, God was able to what? Provide a lamb, a ram. Can you shout, thank you, Lord? Has God ever provided anything for you? Has he ever made a way out of no way for you? Has he ever opened up doors for you? Has he ever what shown himself to be God Almighty? Then give him a praise. Give him a hallelujah. Give him a thank you, Jesus. Somebody out of Jehovah Jireh. My provider. 
because he provided for me this day. Help me say this day. Uh, in the mouth of the Lord it shall be seen. Help me say this day. The Bible says in verse 15, and the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time. Oof. The Bible says in verse 16, and said, by myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, for because Thou hast done this thing and hast not withheld thy son, thine only son. Verse 17, I'm getting ready to jump for joy now. The Bible says that in blessings I will bless thee. Ah, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven. Help me say obedience opens up the favor of God. Help me say obedience opens up the bountiful blessings of God. Help me say obedience opens up that large room of blessings. I, I don't know about you, but I want to be where I obey God so he can call my name and he can say, I am getting ready to bless you with blessing after blessing after blessing after blessing after blessing because of your obedience. Can you shout, yes, Lord? Can you shout, thank you, Jesus? Can somebody say Jehovah Jireh? Say it again, Jehovah Jireh. God, my provider. Can you shout, yes, Lord? Multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is upon the seashore. And thy seed shall possess the gate of of his enemies. Uh, Oof. Well, Can you shout yes Lord? yes Lord? In other words, the son of promise is going to be able to stand against the enemies. And I don't know about you, but yeah. Psalm 127 lets us know that blessed is those that have their quiver full of children. Uh, they'll be able to stand in the gates. In other words, what that is telling us that we the parents are getting older. Am I right? Yeah. That's why we need to what? Be a part of our children's life. So as we get older, our children can stand for us. When our mind is not functioning the way it used to be 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago, our children can stand. Help me say our children can stand. And what speak for us and cause the things that God has blessed us and prosper for nobody to what? Be able to take them away from us. Help me say the son of promise. Say it again, the son of promise is going to be a blessing to Abraham. Can you shout yes, Lord? Verse 18, the Bible says, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Help me say all. Every nation that's being blessed now is because of Abraham's obedience. Are you listening? Amen. And this is why we should never forget about God. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And say and. Amen. Even though there are generations that happen that we have never seen, those generations were in place for us to be where we are today. Yeah. Can you shout yes, Lord? Yes, Lord. Our fathers and our what? Our grandfathers and our what? Our great great grandfathers and yeah. so on and so on. They, many of them, walk in obedience in order to what? Pave a way for us to walk way we walk right now. Can you shout yes, Lord? Yeah. Can you shout, thank you, Jesus. Verse 18, and thy seed, again, listen, and in thy seed shall what all the nations of the earth be blessed because thou hast obeyed my voice. 
we need to say thank you Abraham, thank you, Abraham. for obeying God yeah. Woo! help me say what a, what a test what a test he had to yeah. endure that's why he's mentioned amen and what we call the hall of faith because his faith was really unmatched for someone at that time amen, amen. that he simply heard the voice of God and he obeyed God even to the point of getting ready to what? Plunge a knife into his only son. Yes, yes, yes. Help me say, but God. but God. And listen, people of God, if he did it then, help me say he's the same God. Yes, God. If he did it then, he's able to what? Do it now. Yes. Can you shout yes Lord? yes, Lord? So we simply have to obey God. Help me say Jehovah Jireh. He's my provider. Listen, people of God, this simple message came in the midst of us talking about Moses and their experience. And what I need to let you know that when God gave me this Jehovah Jireh, he allowed me to understand that when God caused the children of Israel to exit out of Egypt, it was estimated over 6 million people left. Over 6 million people left yes. out of Egypt. Say 6 million. Six million. Can you imagine how much food it was necessary to feed over 6 million people? Help me say Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Jireh. Say it again, Jehovah Jireh. In other words, what I'm getting you to understand that even the blessings that are getting ready to happen to the children of Israel, it was because of Abraham's obedience. Yeah. That even now, Moses and the children of Israel is going to be blessed. Yeah. Can you shout, yes Lord. yes, Lord? And God is the same God. Say the same God. Same God. He's blessing after generation he blesses and another generation he what blesses and another generation he what blesses and what another generation he blesses and in our time do we not know that God is still what blessing yes. help me say Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Jireh so I say to you if you are out of the will of God you're really not receiving the total blessings that God has for you. So the Bible simply says, the day you hear the voice of the Lord, harden not your heart. It's time now to get into the will of God and stay there. Amen? I, I often wonder, why is it not being preached that you need to live holy. Wow. Okay. Come on, okay. Let me say that again. Why is it not preached anymore? That you need to live holy. Not just come and give the preacher your hand. Not just be baptized. But you need to live holy. The Bible says follow peace with all men. Holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Why is it not preached that we need to live holy? The decisions that we need to make every day need to bring us closer to God, not further away from God. Please understand, yes, we're living in the dispensation of grace. But grace is not going to put you in heaven if you're living like hell. All grace does is stop God from killing you the moment that you sin. But grace gives you time to repent. Now if you don't repent, then you're still under the curse. And that means you are still living a sinful life, a sinful lifestyle. And that means that grace will not save you if you want to live like hell. 
Can you shout, yes, Lord? Yes, Lord. So it needs to be preached and preached and preached again. It's almost like sometimes I feel that I'm the voice crying in the wilderness. But you've got to prepare to meet Jesus. You've got to prepare your heart. You've got to prepare your mind. You cannot walk with the world and be a friend of God. It's one or the other. So I say to you, yes, God is our provider. But he also says, let the wheat and the taff grow together. Now, let me explain that. Wheat grows, and we need the wheat. But there's like a vine, or it, it, it wraps itself around the wheat. It's called taff. We, we don't eat that. But if we tried to separate the taff from the wheat, the wheat would die. So God is saying, let the good and the bad grow together. But in the day of harvest, God says, he's going to do the separating. He's going to separate the sheep from the goat. And you might, listen, a lot of times the taff looks like wheat. But it's a weed. Help me say it's a weed. Uh, it grows up just as tall as the wheat. But it's the weed. Help me say a weed. You need to understand that God is going to separate the right from the wrong. God is going to separate the holy from the unholy. God's going to separate the righteous from the unrighteous. God's going to separate the worthy from the unworthy. God's going to separate the right from the wrong. And I don't know about you, but when God gets ready to separate, I want to be on the right side. Can you shout, yes, Lord? But I've got to live this way. I've got to live it. So it's just not enough to just accept Jesus in your heart. Because when we call on him, he'll answer. But we've got to now adopt a lifestyle of godliness. You can't be fornicating. What is fornication? Any type of sexual activity. Kissing, hugging, touching, licking, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Yes, come on, Pastor. And you're not married. Right, right. It's a sin. Yes. And God knows sin. Uh -huh. And he says very clearly, for the wages or the payment of sin is death. So you can't act like you're married and you're not married. Uh -huh. And marriage is reserved in God's eyesight only for the man that was born a man and a woman that was born a woman. All right. No transgender nothing. Mm -mm. No. Mm -mm. No cutting off or adding anything. No. No. No, no lesbian. No. No homosexuals, no. That's the world's interpretation. But God's word is holy. And God's word is going to stand in the end. And he says, what? A man and a woman. Amen? And then he wants them to live holy. So that their children can be what? Blessed. And what? Live holy. Can you shout yes, Lord? Somebody holler Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Jireh. Say it again, Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Jireh. He's my provider. my provider. Has he ever provided for you? Yes. Is he providing for you now? Yes. Help me say he's God. God. And he's worthy of his praise. Yes. So I say to you, if you're out of the will of God, if you cross some lines in your life, and this word of God is now letting you know that what you're doing is wrong. My bishop, the late L.T. Weaver, senior, says these words. If you want to do right, just turn right and go straight. Help me say, turn right, turn right. 
and go straight. In other words, God's saying that whatever sin that you've done, even up to this moment, when you confess and say, God, come into my life, help me say my past is past. Now it's get time now to what? Write new history. It's time now to what? Seek the Lord while he may be found. It's time to call upon him while he's yet near. Because it's coming a time when we will move from this realm into eternity. Pastor Bridget and I went to a funeral on yesterday. Young man was 24 years old. Dead. 24. I'm 60. Whew. And to tell you the truth, at age 24, I wasn't even living right. My God. But for that young man, life as we know it is over for him. He has moved into a realm of eternity. What am I saying? You might think you have time. And that's what Satan wants. But whatever age you are, somebody has died your age. Yes. And it's now imperative for you to seek the Lord. Come into the knowledge of holiness and live that way. So that when the time of transition comes, absent from the body, present with the Lord. But don't think that as a sinner dying in sin that you're going to be welcome into a holy heaven. Help me say it's not going to happen. Say it again, it's not going to happen. So we're going to have to live holy. So if you are seeking the will of God, if you're ready to become a member of God's family, simply say this prayer after me. Lord, I am a sinner. I acknowledge that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I acknowledge that Jesus Christ is God. Jesus, come into my heart. Clean me up. Make me new. I'll live for you. I'll serve for you. Until the day that you call me into eternity. If you said that simple prayer, God has come into your life. Jesus Christ has come and turned the darkness into light. Clap your hands for the new believers. <laughs> Clap your hands for the ones that have said, yes, Lord. The Bible says, heaven rejoice. If heaven rejoice, then we should be able to rejoice. When one soul comes to God, help me say, it's worth it all. Say it again, it's worth it all when one soul comes to Christ. And we thank God for the believers. Now it's two things that I ask of you and require of you, new believer. First thing is to get into the word of God. You might say, well, I don't know where to start. Get into the Bible. Listen, I recommend the book of Proverbs that corresponds with the day of the month. And you read that particular Proverbs for that day every day, every week, every month, continually over and over again. And you can always add to that. But Proverbs is the book of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. The second thing I ask of you is to find you a Bible-based church. Not a church that's teaching and preaching a feel-good message when you know you're living like hell. You need to find the church that's going to force you to come out of your sins and live holy to God. Amen? That's the church you want to join. Make sure that you can see in the leadership that they are living holy. Amen? And join that ministry so that you can grow. And if you do that, God's going to bless you and you're going to prosper. Listen, I'm Pastor Chips Davis of N.C. Ministries located at 1801 Port Malabar Boulevard in the beautiful city of Palm Bay, Florida where we offer you a refreshing impartation of God's word. I say, if you enjoyed this message, like it, share it, amen. If you want to sow a seed into the ministry, we appreciate your seed. But most importantly, we want you to live holy. Amen. 
And I say to you these two words that I say pretty much every day. Be blessed.